Oh. M. Mom! Hi, everyone. I'm Heidi in Closet. And I'm Jada Essence Hall. And today's guest is Chris, Chris Atwell, Atwell, a.k.a. The, the Queer, Queer Agenda. Agenda. Yes, honey. Mm. Now, this is an online cultural commentator and feminist, honey. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have some burning, burning, burning conversations. We talk about things such as... Going back into the past and meeting historical figures. Historical figures. We we even get to talk to our friend Bobby from all the way beyond. From beyond. From beyond. And it was really deep. It was very deep. So look, let's get into some nonsense. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh, yeah. I know that's right. Hi, I'm Heidi and Klaus. And I'm Jada Essence Hall. And this is a show where we laugh, learn, and light up. It's Hall and Closet. Ding, ding. <laughs> okay, Heidi, good morning. Good, good evening. Good evening. Well, whatever, whatever time that people are listening to this podcast, good it. Know this. Somebody could be listening to this podcast in the morning mm-hmm. right now in L.A. Yeah. And at that very same time, mm-hmm. someone in the evening will be listening to it in the U.K. Isn't that funny how time works? Time is a magis- mag- mag- magis- mm-hmm. magnificent. Magnificent. Ma- ma- magnificent. Mm-hmm. Thing. It's all about magic, love, mystery. Yeah. Jada. Yes. Earth. Flat around. Girl, oh my God, this is this is a question that has been burning philosophers for years. For years. Um, I say round. You think so? I think that makes the most sense. We've okay. seen it from space. Oh, well, it was well. round. So I don't know. What 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 are you a flat earther? You are not a flat earther. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. What is what is the wildest theory you've ever heard of on the internet? The or, wildest theory. Is if you spill salt, you have to throw salt over your shoulder so you don't get bad luck. If you spill salt, mm-hmm. if you spill it, you have to throw some over your shoulder so you don't get bad luck. Like, do you gotta like throw it over out the pile of salt you wasted? No, you or are now you wasting more salt? Mo- wasting more salt seems more bad luck. Maybe to throw more salt. It was it, uh, it was my grandmother's theory. May- okay, I'm sorry. Maybe she. <laughs> Maybe it was for her cholesterol. I don't know. Okay. She was trying to get less cholesterol. She said a little bit. So, cholesterol or high blood pressure? Yes. (laughs) Both. Uh Uh-huh. I just... (laughs) Yeah. I just know that if you have a lot of salt, Mm -hmm. your toes will swell. Oh. Is that why your feet always be hurting in your shoes? (laughs) Because you're a salty bitch. A salty ass bitch. <laughs> so salty fucking... bitch. Bitch, I thought you was going to make us something about my diet, my eating habits. No, I would never poke fun at something like that. Why would you you'd assume I would poke fun at you in a sense like that? You always make fun of me, honey. I don't think that's the truth. What's the What's the best thing you've ever said about me? <clears throat> well, I said you deserve to win Drag Race, which a lot of people disagreed with. So I feel, oh like, I feel, like, I feel like that was something great that I did. Okay. Th- well, thank you. <laughs> Heidi. You're welcome, babes. I'm going to stand on my shit. You know, the, the best things <laughs> <laughs> to in 2024. In 2024. You know the best things that um I've learned about myself this what? year so far mm-hmm. is that I can do anything. I'm resilient. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> All I did was not You gave agreement. very Jennifer Aniston. I love your confidence. <laughs> I'm, I'm resilient. I am resilient, Heidi. Do you know what that even means? Yes. What does that mean? Resilient is mean like you just, even though you just take a pound and you can keep coming back from it. Like you can, you can, you're, it, things get hard, but you can persevere through it. You're resilient. You Everything keep fighting through it. Everything reminds me of him. <laughs> <laughs> God, that. that you can take a pounding and yes. get through it. Mm-hmm. When life pounds you down, you just keep taking it. Bounce back, bounce, bounce back. I'm so into what was, you. you know what? It's a question I have not asked you in a while. What, what was the last movie you've seen? Like at the movies, the Beyonce movie. Ooh, tea. I saw it. it How was did you stunting. feel? It was really good. It, it, I love the extra insight and the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, uh, the all the 
the special effects that they did with changing in and out the outfits mid performances, like yeah. while I was going, I was like, oh, that's cunty too. You know what was gagging was me? Cunt. The fact that she had three stages and it literally always was fucking juggling. That's sickening. Juggling that stage Bitch, ju- between that's three places. Everything that is everything I was at like, a you time, better, mom. Yeah, you better. but I thought I feel like watching the watching the movie as an artist, I felt very seen. Mm-hmm. Or I felt like a lot less alone listening to Beyonce talk about some of the things that she's experienced. Yes, for sure. Like in the industry, and I was like, oh my god, if, I'm like Beyonce is also. Also get stressed out. Beyonce could get sur- would could get, have to get surgery on her knee. Right. That's kind of crazy. And still to going to rehearsals and, and doing still pulled up and, and getting it. Fierce. Love. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What's the last one you were saying? Um, what was the last movie that I saw? Um The Color Purple. I think that's the last Ooh. movie I saw in the theater. Five, yeah. five, five. The musical, the new the, one. The, well, it's not the musical. It was not like a musical, but there's like yeah. singing in it. Right. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Did you see it? No, you didn't. You I haven't, haven't seen, seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. You would have no. seen it before Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it just yet. Who's your favorite dancer in the Beyonce show? In the movie. Ooh. What was the captain's name? Oh, yeah. What was her name? Um, oh, my God. Why is her name slipping my mind? Girl, she danced. She's fierce. Really, I, you know what? I'm so mad her name is slipping my mind right now. But you know what? She's so fierce. She literally danced um, <laughs> when we did the Excuse Fenty me. when we did the Fenty show. Yes. And in the and if you watch that in the scene where we did like the black and the start of the scene, it's mm-hmm. like a girl in the middle and she's like dancing and she is like just fucking killing it, girl. Mm-hmm. And it's her. That's her, yeah. And literally, I was like, we would we were doing it and we were shooting on the side. I was like, I cannot believe that you literally did that. Goodness. Like, when we, we, we shot it, it was like, they were inside the circle shooting it still. Mm-hmm. Then they went around the circle, around her in the circle shooting it. They went outside the circle still and shot it. They went around outside the circle and shot it. They shot it so many times and every single time she that they it shot it, time, she? she gave it every single time. And she ha- didn't, it was not like she did it and then we stopped and took a break. It was like she did it and then she did it again, then she did yeah. it again, then she did it again. And I was like... How can you do that? That's the thing. That that's how like for for dancers, you rehearse it. You try to always rehearse it full out because, yeah. at least for me personally, what I've taken from my years of dance is that you practice. You end up performing how you practice it. Yeah. And uh, if you're over here half assing it at rehearsal on on show day, you're going to half ass it. Yeah. So by the time you're done with rehearsals and ready for the show day, you could probably do. What you're going to have to do a couple times yeah. because you've done it so many times, yeah. full out. So you're every so used time. to it, yeah. So you could probably do it maybe twice, maybe three times, full out. Like if it's like a full piece, like yeah, a, like a five minute number, you could probably do it maybe twice back to back and not be like completely winded, yeah. So yeah, girl, she, you, uh, you know, she would not talk like because I, I literally asked her that because like I'm like I would feel like I would be completely winded. Mm-hmm. She said, "Well, I know that if I don't do it, any one of these other girls here could do it." And she was like, well, so I don't well, have a choice. One bitch won't but do, another up. one will Hello. do. Hello. So you know. And she was like, so I know I had to pull up. I'm like, girl, to. but that's a lot of pulling up. It, that's a I, lot of pulling up. It, that scene, if y'all go back and watch that scene, y'all, you she see, up. that part was fierce. And I was like, I was really gagged that I got to do the Finchie show, girl, because when I was like in that space, I'm like, I was just thinking, like, I'm like, how many different women were shoot that like were in that scene that were dancing, like the height. The sizes, the skin tones, the hair textures, the just like the different facial features, and like just all these different beautiful people. All and I'm like, all I was like, girl, I feel like I'm like being a part of like some sacred moment. It was kind of fierce. It was. It looked great. It Thank looked you. Fierce. Thank it looked you. Looked good. Well, I tried to do what I can. Uh, I'm just glad you didn't break a leg. Well, I broke a knee. Oh well, let's take a break. Oh, yo, bitch, I saw that. I should have saw that coming. Let's take a break. <laughs> We are back. We are back. <laughs> wow. Heidi's eyes are not red because she's high no. today, surprisingly. No. Her eyes are red because she's crying. It was a very, we were talking right passionately. before this. Very passionate. It was getting very passionate. Here. But you know what we're also passionate about? Yes. What are we passionate about? Our guest. We are. We, we love are our guests. We are passionate about our guest. 
all, and always consentful with that passion. And honestly, what I love about this guest today is how passionate they are with their content and Period. what they bring. So we are going to welcome Chris Atwell. A.K.A. The Queer Agenda. Hi, everyone. Hey. hey. I'm so excited to be here. Hi. How, how are, how you? are you? I'm good. You guys look beautiful, dazzling. By Thank the way, you. I, I, I didn't, I didn't get a, a note of the theme, or else I would have, I would have been, I would have well, been you, in line. You look, but you look good. It doesn't even matter. You, you look great. I love the lip, the lip gloss. I gave y'all a puffy shoulder and everything. You so you fashion. Uh, it's giving fashion. Yeah. It's right on point. <laughs> How's your day been going so far? It's been good. Um, I couldn't wait to see you guys. I've pretty much been preparing for this all day because believe it or not, this is only going to be like my second podcast ever. Really? really? Yes. Oh, the entire time I've been doing uh, content, I've been like avoiding podcasts like the plague. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's such a like when I'm filming, it, it seems very I'm not going to say it seems. It's a very casual process. Obviously, I'm just in my room shouting at my phone. Yes. So I always saw a podcast as more of a kind of like a structured kind of environment. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, you came to the right motherfucking oh, place there's, today. There's very there's, little structure here. I, it's like a body. <laughs> we just know we have a new spine. We, we have a too. skeleton, but there's a couple bones missing. I would, well, say. I would say most bones <laughs> Most <are> missing. bones are <laughs> <laughs> Hey, sounds good to me. Yes. I was always nervous about doing a podcast. We were talking about doing the podcast, and I was always nervous because I just didn't want a shitty, like, co-host. But here we are. Mind you, I was the one who <laughs> put the idea of doing a podcast in your head. Well, yeah, because I didn't even know what a podcast was. <laughs> so you just... That, that. Girls... Okay. Thank you. <laughs> See, now, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. We got a mediator. Thank you. We love a good mediator. I love a good mediator. <laughs> now, we... <laughs> I always have this thing where Heidi will say something and I will say literally the thing right after her <laughs> and then go into a question. I'm glad that that's a thing for you. You guys are in sync. Thank you. Well, yeah. I feel like we're like a well-lubed machine. Well, you never answered. Did you find a shitty uh, co-host? Um, well, yeah. You oh, also, yes. also, 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 I'm shitty now. <laughs> Talk to Glasgow. <laughs> Stop now. That was one time. Okay, yeah. That was the one time. That yeah. was a long tour. It, it was a long tour. It, it was a hard tour too. Have you have you ever seen a drag show like on like a tour like a touring drag show like um, the Chris what is, what is the Christmas the t complete title of the Christmas tour? It's called the uh, Naughty Tour uh, Drag Queen Christmas. The Drag Queen Christmas, yeah. It's yeah. always changed like the the theme of it has changed, but it's like a drag queen Christmas or like I do work the world. Have you ever seen one of like those moving shows like that? I uh, I've seen drag shows, but I haven't really seen a tour drag show i actually was supposed to go to uh work the world when was that had to be maybe i don't know i don't remember exactly when it yeah. was but i got covid oh, <laughs> no. so i was actually supposed to see work the world. got covid didn't see so no i've never seen a touring drag show i live um in atlanta so of course okay. i've so seen yeah. drag yeah, shows, yeah, of but course. i've never seen a we touring will. drag show. Yeah. Well, then maybe we yeah. need to make sure you get tickets, though. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Next stop in Atlanta. Because I want to, like, know, like, how, hey, did you, how did you end up becoming a fan of drag? Oh, I will say, and this is so crazy. Growing up, I will say my first exposure to drag growing up was, I'm sure you guys know this movie, Two Wan Fu. Yes, but, yes, um, yes. Wesley Snipes. Mm -hmm. Wesley Snipes, John Legwood. Patrick Swayze. John, da, da, da. Um, that was my mother's favorite movie when I was coming up. So I always saw that. Mm -hmm. That was like my first exposure to it. And uh, my older sister is a lesbian as well. Yeah. And she is actually the person who got me into drag and ballroom. Uh, she's the one who first ever showed me Paris is Burning. Yes. She's the one that first ever showed me Drag Race. It was that god awful season with that uh, Vaseline filter. Yes. I've been here since the beginning. The sacred season. Yes, one. I've been here since the since the budget was low from yes. the start. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. So she, I will say that my older sister is who will really expose me to drag. Now, my first drag show, I don't even remember when that was. I had to be like, what, 18? That means you went to a lot. Oh my God. You've been to a lot of shows. You know, were you, kinda, were you a, a little light connoisseur. Were you exposed I'm by sorry? your elder sibling as well? Um, yes. 
Well, no. I was. To, to, I, my to, eldest, dra- to, to drag? Yeah, my eldest sibling exposed me to drag as well. Really? No. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I I didn't really even, I, I was exposed to drag through like one of those little, you know, like you have like the little local community books, like little queer books, like little queer magazines in the community. Oh, yeah. And I was flipping through one of them one day and it was like a picture of um, a local queen from home named Shannon Dupree. Mm. And she was Miss US mm. of A, Miss Wisconsin US of A. And I was like, oh, wow. oh what is that? I kind of saw it and I was like, oh, okay, I put it in my back pocket. And look at you I now. never thought. I never thought. Really thought about it. But now, now look at me. I'm a drag queen. That's right. Crazy. I'm crazy. <laughs> now we we already been, have been drilling you about um, drag. But let's just for all the people out there who don't know, like let's talk about the content that you create. Um, what inspires like you to create the content, mm-hmm. and what type of content do you do for all the people out there in the world? Well, it's actually crazy because five years ago, I would have never even pictured myself doing anything like this, Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly. I was never even much into social media in general. I was more into it as like a spectator. Like I was just like Mm -hmm. scrolling Tumblr, you know, putting viruses on the family desktop. That was my exposure to social media. I wasn't really participating. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as TikTok, and uh, when I first started doing TikTok, me and my partner was doing like little, you know, the little couples dances yeah, doing on TikTok? You know, the little corny Mm -hmm. couple videos? Mm -hmm. Initially, that's what I thought that we were going to be doing. Um, so I scrolled for about a year before I started making TikTok videos. And I don't know how I came across more of the social justice political side. Mm-hmm. But once I did, I was like, hmm, you can get on the Internet and run your mouth about things that you're passionate about. And yeah. like you said, you put uh, uh, that drag queen in your back pocket. Yeah. I put that in my back pocket. I was like, hmm. Yeah. And I, I, I don't remember the exact event, but it was something that was going around, um, I'm sorry, on around that time. It may have been the whole George Floyd thing. I'm not completely sure. But there was some inciting incident that really drove me to say, okay, I got some shit to say. Yeah. So I made my first video that was uh in the realm of social justice. Um, yeah. Kept posting, kept posting, started to get kind of a, a following. But so that's how I got into TikTok. But what inspires me is really I just be talking about stuff that I'm passionate about. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as far as the queer agenda, which is uh, pretty much my brand, that's where I'm that's how I'm titled on all social media is the queer agenda. Honestly, that that brand or that name, I'm not even gonna lie, I started off as like mockery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, I'm in it. Yeah, I'm like an antagonist at heart, yeah. and I love to antagonize big up the bear. So yeah. few things, right? Few things are more ridiculous to me than the fact that queer people existing in public mm-hmm. is just so threatening to people yes. that they have come up with this grand right. idea of this agenda Some that sort we've constructed crazy to lure them. Right, to lure them away from their villages like fucking Cunty Prod Piper. I don't yes. know. Oh, ah! but it, that, Cunty that, vampires that, or something. That idea is just so ridiculous to me, so I just had to mock it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So that's why I titled myself that. But then it kind of um, transformed to where I do actually have an agenda now. There isn't a queer agenda. But I have one. Yes. Right. And yes. really just what drives my content is I've long since decided that I don't give a damn what dominant society says. Nobody's personhood or relationship is more valid than mine, yours, or anybody else's just because they so happen to be cis heterosexual. Right. Amen. And right. that's just basically what drives my content. I'm here to for, for queer people, black women, all of these groups that are so marginalized in society, I've made it my business to, for you guys to know, if y'all don't get preferential treatment nowhere else, you're going to get it on my goddamn platform. Yeah. So that's that's what really drives. I love it. Yeah. I had a really good question. You, you can go ahead. If you... I was going to ask you, is there anything that's recently become like a new passion of yours that you've been working on or got in the works? Oh, that's a good. I actually have a lot of stuff in the works. More, um, I want to, uh, I will say generally okay. to not give anything away. Yeah, yeah of, course, of course. I'll say generally. Yeah. Yeah. This year, I really want to get more into actual community work. Mm-hmm. Like I've been working on the commentator side. It's easy to be online, like I said, screaming at your phone. Yeah. But yeah. it's not as easy to really get out in the field and like, right. like really mm-hmm. do do the work. Yeah. So that's more so what I want to yeah. like harness in my community more than just online. Love. So, oh my god. Oh, I can't wait. That's, the, I can't that's wait my goal it. this year. It's like <laughs> off the off the net and in the streets. 
off the exactly. Industry. Yes, I want to. I want to mm-hmm. talk about it and be about it. Put, so put that on a shirt year, too. I wanted to know exactly. You, literally, off child, the you know, put it in the They'll put anything on a shirt. Honey. Okay, hello. <laughs> I was. I was <laughs> wondering also, like, what is? What do you feel like is one one piece of your content that has gone wildly viral, and why do you think that 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 piece of content was like so well received? It's actually funny because I find that it's always the videos I don't think. Like, the videos I put my blood, sweat, and tears into. Like, I'm like, this shit, this gonna be the one. The hoes gonna eat this up. The one video I'm I'm always thinking is gonna go viral never does. And then the videos that I don't think are going to go viral always do. That's how it goes. I will say my first, like, viral video that I really cared about it was about the whole, uh, I'm not homophobic, it's for the kids. Okay. Y'all know that yeah. that rhetoric, that, that talking yes. point. I was basically dissecting that. That was my first ever video. I don't mm-hmm. remember what little gay cartoon character they had thrown on TV, and it was uh, causing yeah. a bunch of a bunch of havoc. The um the default setting community was in an uproar. <laughs> the default so, setting. I, yeah. <laughs> and I made a video about that. And that was the first one that went viral and let me know, okay, as far as queer advocacy, okay, I have something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was the first one. That is sick yeah. thing. Oh my God. Yeah. Now I was about to say, because that talking point in general is the one that most like gets on my nerves. Of course, homophobia in general yeah. gets on my nerves, but yeah. that for the kids shit. That, Try to button. use using it's, children. Yes, the button. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. That that whole topic mm-hmm. is crazy mm-hmm. to me. It is. I I feel like it's it's very wild that like people are like you would throw children under the bus in an argument to be like to try to feel like I'm right about something. Yeah. Well, it's I a tactic of just, distraction. Exactly. I, yeah. Hiding the bigotry behind the kids. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. And my, another one of my little uh, quotables, I always say, if you're going to be a piece of shit, at least think proudly. Honey. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I love yeah. And it's like, bigotry in general, obviously, is unpleasant. It's not a good thing. But I would prefer you just say, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it. It's, it's icky to me. It, I, I just don't like it. Don't don't right. try to go for the kids, especially yeah. when y'all to be the ones asking kids in kindergarten if they got boyfriends or not. Yeah, you know hello, it's, call it like, out. It, it, there it is. Call if anybody's really exposing kids, it's not us. Right. I'm just gonna say that, and it's not drag queens. It, absolutely, hello. Say that Thank, for the you. Thank you. I'm like, if some of us don't even. I'm child. I ain't gonna say that because it don't really matter. But child, I'm like, I be giving a, a set that sometimes I'm like, don't put the, bring the children in this building. And I know that. You know what I mean? But yeah. also those are events that are happening at night. I don't I'm not even comfortable enough to be getting too sexy during the daytime. No. I'm a simple girl. I'm gonna give you class. And they wanna make us believe that some queen reading fucking rumple steel skin to, to a, a child, child. is it's it's some national Just so, so, <laughs> crisis. Right. Somebody should read to the child. You know, it helps the child grow skills of reading. Because often all, often they're probably they're not, not being read to at home. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> or it's just a fun event. Like, I think the more, whether things are queer or not, the more experiences that you expose your children to. I um I recently went home to North Carolina. Yeah. And I, way about five, six years ago, I read to, to just a, a real, I was at a library and read to the kids. Yeah. And I went home this past mm-hmm. year. Wait, you did? Mm-hmm. A long time How ago. How did you make that happen? It mm-hmm. was, it was like, the, I was Miss Greensboro Pride. And I'm talking about was the a, reading. Oh, yeah. I, it was a struggle. It was. <laughs> I had to definitely get one with mostly pictures in it, for sure. Yeah. It, it helped. But um, <laughs> one of the kid, when I was at Pride this year, um, one of the kids that was at that reading all those mm. years ago came up to me and remembered me. It was just so sweet. And it was, it was just, oh it was a very God. touching moment. His name's Luke, and he has a sister named Maddie. They're, they're very, the sweetest little kids. Yeah. Uh, we made giraffe puppets with. Uh, uh, brown paper oh, bags yeah. and yellow pieces of paper. We love a mother goose. Hello. I was like, what's wrong with that? What's, what's, I but, don't know what But we're you wrong know what? It's like literally and, uh, just to show like the impact that the work that we do can have on uh, like on mm-hmm. people. You know what I mean? It, it's so weird that uh, I'm like for as many people that people think that drag queens or people who speak their minds like especially on social media about how they feel or about like even like how you do right. about our community um, I'm mm. sorry, I'm a little high. It's okay. She, oh, she's. She, I'm sorry, my co-host is the shitty co-host in in all. In actuality, she was the <laughs> shitty co-host. 
Uh, she's she's at her she, moment. She, and she the, knows where I was going. She I don't actually. You don't. Look, we said fuck structure. Let's Let me tell you. I'm, yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> Mom, I'm not gonna tell you where you was going. I, you, tell I'm, me. I'm not gonna tell you where you was going. But you, you know, know where you was going. How do I? You don't actually. I, I don't. <laughs> but I would. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> Mama, but I will tell you I this. You. I, I, I do know where you're going. Maybe just like that's the idea behind it, impact. Mm, yeah. Like when we talk about exposing kids to queer people, it's like people go, and I and this is weird to me because I've always said that straight people be more, be more obsessed with gay sex than gay people do. Um, hello. Because when we speak about homosexuality, they only see sex. There's nothing yeah. besides debauchery and sex. That's right. the only thing. And that's another way of dehumanizing queer people, right? Yeah. Body. Anything about queer relationships or homosexuality, sex, sex, sex. So, so when we say, oh, you need to expose children to homosexuality. They think that we're trying to give five-year-olds an instruction on fucking anal sex. Right. We're right. not trying to do no. that. You no. know what I'm saying? Right. We're just, it's just we're trying. We find age-appropriate ways to explain everything else to children. You, you got right. the piggy bank for the saving money. And kids, if their parents get divorced, mm-hmm. we even death. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We bring kids to funerals, marriages, all that. We find age-appropriate ways to expose them to every right. goddamn thing else. Right. When it comes to homosexuality, that's the one thing everybody pretends like, oh, there's no way to expose children to that in a way that's age appropriate. Right. And that's mm-hmm. all like drag story time is. Right. Honestly, Kids yeah. need exposure to different kinds of people. Yeah. You know, straight people that's, are boring. They don't need to do that's what I, around Yeah. Uh, the more people boring. we meet, the, mo- the, better, the better the melting pot. And like literally like the experience of being like working with a drag queen or having an experience of having somebody that's mm-hmm. like brown or black and like speaking up for the community. The more you, you, you're you mm-hmm. around those people, the more educated you become. I feel like the better of a person you become. And I feel like ignorant people, their exactly. job is to try to hold you back from being like, yeah. from being smarter, from thinking individually. And you sit here and like, what person is more individual thinking than a person that's going, I don't care what my community says, I'm still going to dress up in a way that y'all might not ab- might approve of and still live my life. To a lot of those people, that's like, I don't want you giving my kid the idea that they could do that. Yeah, it's not exactly, about being queer. Yeah. It's about them being being able to express themselves the way they want to or feeling free. And they... It's, People have this idea about ownership over people. I'm like, you can we don't, you don't own these children like that. And eventually one day they're going to become adults. And when they do become adults, they're going to have their own morality. They're going to have their own sense of justice and all these other yeah, things. Exactly. That's going to be their own and not yours. They're, yeah. not, they're not meant to be a mirror of who you are. Yeah. You're supposed to allow people to grow and become the person they are supposed yeah. to be. Hello. And I think there's and the a, is, a disconnect. Yeah. And the thing is like, any queer person who's like older than 25 is proof of that because we didn't have very much queer representation growing up. Yeah. Right. Um, Literally. As as, and I'm mm. sure you guys know that. I was raised in a I'm good 22. old black Baptist household. <laughs> I was raised in a church like most uh, black girls and boys from the South. Yeah. And I still turned out a, a, a flaming lesbian who I, yells at people about homophobia. All day. Hello. I went to church so almost five like, times a week sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, okay, we would we would we were going to church. See, my mom but... was a bit more Christian light. Yeah, Not, we okay. Were, we oh, we were, only went uh, sometimes on Sundays. I said, good. <laughs> I said you at church more than God is, honey, girl. Bible at that study, point. Sunday service, five days a week rehearsal for choir, honey. Uh, s- Sunday Saturdays was uh we Sunday, worked Monday. at the soup kitchen. Okay, at the oh, church. giving back. So you was a choir kid. I could see that. Oh, I could see the choir. That's kid how I learned lip sync, honey. Uh, what about I'll be in the back. <laughs> Huh? What about singing? It's a choir. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned how to lip sync. Okay, good. Play, <laughs> fake it till you make it. <laughs> so you really wasn't even giving it up for the Lord. Well, I I used to be on the pew, and that's why I tell my mama now I was there. And I, was, <laughs> I was in the building. Not all of it, not all of it stuck, but I was on the pew. I was there. I Honey. was the one eating candy. <laughs> I'm just tired looking Loudly. at my fingers doing this. Just making a mess. <laughs> ready to leave. <laughs> just ready I to sl- leave. I did sneak out a couple of times from church. How did you sneak out To go up church? to the gas How station. How did you manage that? So, okay, so my church To go to had, the gas station. There was a gas station up the street that sold the best pizza in the world. Okay. So me and my cousins, would we would we would say we're going to the restroom. We'd all go to the restroom at the same time. Mm. We'd run up the street to the, to the gas station, order a pizza, eat the pizza, and then run back into the church. It was actually, and quite- you would make it before 
the service. Well, we would have gas station. We would pizza. go. We would go right before the pastor started preaching. Okay. So we know we had at least 30 minutes before he was done. So we had at least 30 minutes to be back in the pew before church was done. Oh, my God. Yeah. Girl, that's the longest part in my life. I feel <laughs> like. Not absconding from church. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back from leaving the Lord for pizza. Yeah. That is it. Not, you ditched, not you ditched Jesus. Jesus don't want me to, <laughs> Jesus don't want me to starve. I <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. That's why they was giving his flesh out at the thing. Honey, that, it wasn't it wasn't the communion I, I, Sunday. I was gonna say not the, the communion way for okay. it wasn't it wasn't the them, first them. Sunday. <laughs> it wasn't the first Sunday. Okay, good. Oh, that's <laughs> only on first Sunday. <laughs> only on the first Sunday. I don't know much about that. It's okay. See, babe. y'all know I'm a heathen. I thought they did that every every service. I did too. I, I thought that was a, I thought that was a weekly or at least bi weekly thing. I think maybe some denominations some denominations might do it more frequent, but the one I like we grew up. Did they give you extra juice? Every month? Or is it no. Like- My mother is going to be so proud of this segment of the show. Like, she's going to love this part right here. Really? <laughs> hey, mom. Hey, mom. How you doing? <laughs> from, from our mom to your mom. <laughs> and Literally. she loves both of you guys, by the way. Oh. What's her? I, I forced her to watch it, and now she loves Drag Race. We all actually sit and watch it as a family. Her name is Tammy, and she told me to tell you guys that she loves you. Hey, oh, Tammy. Thank you. you. We Tammy. love you, too. Period. Uh, now you may not be on TV unless you play this on TV, <laughs> but we, but we are giving you love on TV. So just play this on YouTube on your television. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then tell tell all your friends. Yeah, you we'll on take TV. you. We'll take you. You know, I'm so glad you came. I'm literally so glad that you came by the podcast and like stop and talk with us because I know you have a very busy life and schedule. You have you have some phones to yell at for sure. Exactly. Exactly. I was about to say I don't know about busy. How, <laughs> well, but how often but I have do, a phone to scream. At. How often do you make content? <laughs> oh, let's see. Ideally, I, I I would like to get to the point of making it every day. That's how I, when I first started doing TikTok, I was a lot more consistent than I am now then life started lifing. Mm. Um, so I'm really getting back, yeah. especially since I recently uh, went full time content creator. Because I at, at first, for the first three years of doing content, I still maintained my nine to five. Yeah, work. So I was still coming. I was still working, coming home from work, doing the content. Got rid of the job, and now I'm focusing on content full time. Were you um Were you getting Were you getting recognized at work while still doing the content? Yeah, yes, and that's when I knew I had to get out of there. <laughs> the first. <laughs> Oh, in a super conservative environment. Oh, baby. They yes. Was, they and, was... and the thing about it is, I ain't gonna lie, who I am on TikTok is just who I am. I was right. that way at work, too. Yeah. Like, certain okay. stuff, they, they already knew. I, 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 was, I was out at work and everything, but once the uh, customer started saying, hey, I recognize you from so-and-so, in front of my coworkers, I was like, oh, no, the block is hot. I got to get the fuck out of here. Okay, yeah. Yes. But it, it happened a few times. The, um, the spot. Damn. Yeah, and in general, when I get recognized, um, I'm always, of course, honored and flattered. But yeah. it happened a few times at work. Yeah. Well, I'm always honored, flattered, and afraid. Yeah, I, I, I have very strong, polarized yeah. opinions. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, what if somebody, what if somebody recognizes me, and I'm thinking they're coming over to like say, hey, and, and they're I'm upset. like, you bitch, you da 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 da. The children. <laughs> I'll be a little scared. Yeah. You're screaming at the children at you. The children <laughs> is for the children. <laughs> Oh no! Well, please be safe. I, I, I be a, I be a little spooked. And we have an election uh, coming up. Yeah, say safety is always my concern. Always, always. But we have we have this election coming up. How are you yeah. feeling so far about like what what the climate of this particular shit is right now? Because it's kind of wild. Child, shit is a great word for it. <sighs> shit is a great word for it. Honestly, I typically do a lot of election work. Um, I work with a lot of nonprofits, typically around the election. Yeah. To you know, just spread messaging about it. This one, I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know what this one looks like for me, especially because of the events of like the last several months. Yeah. Um, yeah. Internationally. Yeah. Um, a lot of my, I can't say my perspective has shift has shifted, but it has deepened. Yeah. On a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I like this year has taught me a lot. You know, as much as I ran my mouth and as uh, sanctimonious as I am. Mm-hmm. I can always admit that there's a lot of stuff, even politically, that I don't know. And this yeah. year really, really exposed me to some shit that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. So at this point, I don't even really know what the yeah. election looks like. As far as feeling, dread, doom, despair. Yeah. I think that's, I think well, that's like a general like, consensus. Well, do, you have, do you have like any advice you would give yeah. to like people that might like be like also feeling 
dreadful about what's coming up? Um, at first, uh, at first, I will say I get it. I get it, especially if you're a person. Because, like I said, this year has taught me a lot, and it has always taught me what. And I'm sorry, it has also taught me what people mean by ignorance is bliss. Because mm-hmm. mm. shit is much easier when you don't know nothing. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you're not aware of the inner workings of these systems mm-hmm. and its government, it, you 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 do have an easier life. I will tell you that for sure. Um, but as far as advice, I will say, stay passionate, but take time when you need to. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I try to do. Is as, as 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 involved in these issues as I am, and as up to date on these issues as I will always remain. I always try to re- remind myself when I need to take a step back. Yeah. We we regroup and then get back to it, and that's really the all the advice that I could get. Yeah, because we all just out here trying to survive at this point. So I ain't really got much advice, yes. but all I can say guard is guard your loins, guard your loins. Exactly. That there. That's Literally. the advice. Just be ready. <laughs> just be ready. Stay on ready. So that's you ain't got to get advice. ready. <laughs> Buckle up. That's the advice because oh, we all headed to hell together. She. D- Hello. <laughs> Save me a seat, Jada. Uh, well, I, well, I'm not a seat. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> seat. Seat multiple. The face. Oh. No, you ain't sitting on my face. <laughs> sister, no. Sister. 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 <laughs> what yeah. kind of sister? Okay. Sister wives. <laughs> sister wives, literally. Okay, so we're yes. going to take a break and we'll be right okay. back. All right, guys. Thank you. We're back. Let's react mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and get into these emails. Let's do okay? it. So, thank you, Queer Agenda, for joining us for these emails. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, you want? I'll, I'll go first. You can go first. That was supposed to be a burp. You tried it, Miss Girl. But, I, but I'm just <laughs> nothing. I I can't even. Be You're just so I delicate and dainty. You just couldn't muster it up. <laughs> Stephanie from Texas has a question for you, Heidi. Oh, work. And for all of us, I'm assuming at this point. What's the one thing you'll never lose at? Oh, God. You cannot say drag race. Girl, I lost twice. Well, I lost one and a half times. <laughs> okay, what am I? <laughs> That's a fun way to put it. She said, what's the one thing we can't lose that at? You, that you'll never lose at. Oh, God. That I will never lose at. Who this is? Probably like a, a seed spitting contest or something like that. I have I have really good like a force. Projectile. Tu- I have good tunnel force coming through my gap that can shoot very far. I would say I'm really good at I wouldn't lose very often at that. Okay. I'll show you later. That oh. I'm sitting here realizing I ain't got no time. Like, what the fuck am I good at? What could I never lose? This at? bitch just spit on me. Give me some time. I could lose at anything. I didn't I think know. nothing was going to come out. This bitch just spit on me. Wait, wait, she did fucking I spit on me. <laughs> I didn't think it was. You better was fucking oh, get her, babe. Away. I feel like I missed something. You better get this bitch. <laughs> she tried to show. She tried to do it, and it's like literally. <laughs> Can I get a paper towel? Did you just squirt on camera? Yes, yeah, squirt she squirted on bit. camera and it literally is like. Oh, I missed it. I do was you know what? Away. Did you know who Reptile from Mortal Kombat is? Yes. That's what it gave. That, that's the lizard. <laughs> no, the rest spin the acid. <laughs> oh my God. See, I told y'all I wouldn't lose at it. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. What is it, what is it for you? One thing I would never lose at. Yes. Oh, an argument. Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> doubt. I'll say an argument. I feel like my answer is very easy. Um, I feel like I will never lose at being me. <laughs> Duh, because there's a lot of bitches that try. Oh, that's so hallmark. You can, <laughs> you can put that in a back to school special. I love that answer. Thank you. But the children. The children, not the children. <laughs> oh, my God. But the children. Okay, what? Well, I'll do the next one. Okay, cute. Next one. Daniel from Up North. Ah, just oh, that's just Up the north. It's from the northern state. Well, he don't want north. us to know where the key at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't either. Put your grinder on and look for that. That's probably why. It's probably, probably good. Yeah. <laughs> What's something? Wait, I skipped one. I was wrong one. Yeah, that's... What was your "I'm too old for this shit" moment? All stars. But I'm. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, 
Y'all gotta make me forget the question. Mama. Okay. There's a little truth behind every LOL, by the way. <laughs> Bitches don't be laughing for nothing, bitch. The girls, they kiki and break up when it's too true, when it's too real. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> um, what was my I'm too old for this shit moment? Oh, that's a good question. I would say the last time I was in a club. Really? I would say the I'll, last time I was in a club. Sometimes it hit, and I realized a lot of the music I didn't recognize. Okay. And I realized I couldn't get it as low as I used to could, and I was like, okay, it's time to hang it up. I would say the last time I was in a club was oh. the last time, especially think- the Atlanta club. Scene, hell no. Um, Honestly, I would say yeah. that's my. I, I'm not gonna say that. I love the club. I love. I love. I, lo- I, lo- I, I, I know you love a club. You stay in on Sandy Street. Look at you. Because <laughs> I like to dance. I go out. I, let me just say this. Y'all. I only like to go um, out when I'm with the girlies or like a good group of people. Yeah, that's my kind of vibe. But I, that's true too. Your company matters. Be, company is the most company. important thing in the world, girl. Yes. You could go to go party in a tin cup, but you know what? If you with the you right bitches, right it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be a good time. Hey, running. that is that is very true. That's the right group of be, people, right strain. I think that's hello. that be, hello. I think most of the times when there's <laughs> like a big, <laughs> like when something happens at the club, it's like the, the group too too big. It's too many people. It's yeah, too much going on. Too many, too many wild. Too many people bumping shit, knocking yeah. shit over, stepping mm-hmm. on your feet. Good group, everyone in a good Moderate. zone. Nobody have that, a good night. So what's every, the ideal group group size for a club? Maybe album? like like five how many back. girls? Oh, I can't say but that. I, I think that like yeah. the like the core of it. Like there can be others mm-hmm. people coming in and out, shifting, moving, going. Oh, the core, in, but like a core solid like, group, like the people who go to the pregame. Right, the people that was at the house getting ready together before y'all left. Like, out that, five. that group. I don't know because I be having entourage energy. You do like that. <laughs> not entourage, but it be me and my bitches. We be out. Yeah, it be here. a bunch of them sometimes. It depends. We like, really be in these streets. Yeah. It do be a lot. <laughs> but I would say maybe like five, six. Literally seven, yeah. Five, so I think that's a good number. Too. Yeah, around there, five, six, seven, yes. maybe eight, just in case people, people want to right, get crazy. If, if, up it's, in the club. if it's the right bitches, depending yes. on the club you're going to, might need to that's be twenty. That's another thing. If you might need to be that's twenty bitches, thing. honey. If it's big enough, might need the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it depends on the, yeah. It depends on, on, on which club, which part of town too. As far as there, there. and there it is. Um, certain parts of town, you need a bigger group. You, would, you, need, <laughs> you need your family too, and. Exactly, and that that one that fight exactly. everybody, the one that you know go for no. My cousin T Bird, T Bird, no T Bird. Yeah, I love a lounge. T Bird will. I love a I love a lounge. Twenty five dollars. Okay, a lounge vibe. I'm more of a lounge girl than a cl- mm. than a club. I can get into the club like y'all said. If it's the right people, the right club, you know the the, the, right the element is there. Mm-hmm. Huh? The right song. Always the, the right, right music, song. Then I fuck my baby daddy. Time. I'm about to, look, don't okay. get me started. There we go, club night. There it is. Okay, let's answer another question. Let's do it. Natasha writes in, what's something you want to do but never will? Hmm. But I never will. Okay, do. this is a thing that I was discussing okay. recently with my friend. Oh. I would like to skydive, I feel like. You never will, though. But, bitch, I feel like I'm going to be up there, and when we get ready to go, I'm going to be like, no, thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. Girl, start seeing people just falling out the sky, bitch. I'm going to be like, close the door. Let's, no, no, no. And then, oh, that's a good question. But I think I'm, I'm I not, would I might be with, willing to try. I might with skydive, but I'm the opposite. I'm not going, like, scuba dive, uh-uh. Oh, no. I'm not going under the So you'll go in the air, but not the water. Uh-huh. I don't like it. it See, I don't fuck with either one. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> that, so, like... I won't go on a submarine. <laughs> Look, certain, certainly not a Sprite can. Uh, not, a, not a soda can. Certain, certain. And I don't care who the yeah. team is. That ain't going right. to turn, mama. Yeah. Ain't, ain't no soundtrack. Ain't no playlist good enough for that. Okay, right, now, now, well, oh, I agree. Nah, I'm good. Okay. I still think about that every day, that submarine that thing. Is, that's I was the crazy. One it was wild. That, and that's I, the one event from 2023 like that. Every day at some point, I really think about that shit. I like think about it. got on a Pringle can Pringle. and went to the bottom of, of the, the ocean. ocean. And this is a gag. Nobody, no, it, like people kind of gloss over that that happened. Yeah. Right. I, and, and you're right. I don't really hear as many people talking about it. And it's like, that's such a a, a movie making moment. Like, Tragedy. I can't believe that happened. I would have probably come soon. Hopefully, too, somebody with a budget. Let's <laughs> let's, start, let's start writing it. Let's start writing it. We should start writing let's it. Let's write it. Bitch, we in LA right now. Bitch, this city it. is full of writers. Well, let's get one. 
No, let's not get one. Let's be one. <laughs> oh, well, let's do it. I'm already writing stuff. What? What do you? Wait, sorry. Wait one second. What do you have so far, Heidi? We got for a guest right here for the, for the fucking movie. Well, me, well, I've been talking. Well, hurry up. <laughs> 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 Why are we like this? Ah! Imagine, imagine Heidi just aired us out just, with a just start, just start. Just I said the whole thing. All the this thing. is great storytelling. Let me call Steven <laughs> Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait, what is one thing you, you that you said you that you would never do? It, the question was something that I would want to that do, but would never, yeah. never do. Because if this is just stuff I would never do, I got a long list That's of that. That's a lot. Okay, literally. But, but stuff that I would want to do, but know that I'm not going to. This is going to sound weird, but uh, being a parent. Uh, That's going to sound strange. Honestly. Only reason I say that is because I know, and this is going to sound so pretentious, I don't care. But the children. I know that I would be a good parent and that I would do everything necessary to be a good parent. It's just that ultimately I know I would never actually do it or Ooh, want yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I know that if I undertook it, that I would do a good job. That you would handle that shit. And would. Exactly. I feel like I feel like I would be a great mother. I just don't want to be one. Yeah. So I'll stick for being the uh, cool gay auntie instead. Honey. That, I, I would say parents. I don't it's feel like I man. wanted. I didn't want to be a cool gay auntie, but my career moved me to that place. Honestly, Tia. It, I mean, it's never. It's it's never too late. Yeah, Tia. Tia, not this girl. <laughs> this she learned. She recently learned Spanish. I, I, I speak a little Spanish, so she's been you Tia coffee. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want me to do the next one? Yeah, let's do the next one. Okay, because I like well, these. Bobby from Beyond has a sh story to share. Oh, These dead. locations, bitch. Is that bitch dead? Like, what the it hell? Said Bobby from Beyond? Bobby, what? where the fuck you coming from? Don't be sending hey, me no Bobby. damn scary hey, ass message. Are you here right now? Dead? Bobby. Bobby, you better get the fuck out of this studio, <laughs> bitch. Is that, an, is that an answer? Where you at? You, from Beyond? You be lucky you over there and you virtually here. Because now this <laughs> motherfucker all up in here from Beyond coming in, to, typing what in the, on the goddamn... This man is crazy. We're sending us emails from the dead. From beyond. Okay, well, what did he got to say? He got a story to share. So I was sleeping. We know. Uh, with who? Bobby, we know you're sleeping. Uh, <laughs> and in the middle of the dream, a character of my dream, who was doing something, turned her head, looked at me very seriously, and said, there's someone in your apartment. Wake up. Work. Where's the rest of the... Bobby! <laughs> he just wanted to share. Where's the rest of the question? someone in the apartment. It seems to be Bobby. <laughs> we well, were supposed Bobby. to give him advice. Bobby. Did you want advice, Bobby? You didn't want to finish this. Okay. Bobby, finish um, your thought. <laughs> well, let's just give advice to Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. It's the, it's not like it might Bobby. be too late for Bobby. Or maybe we shouldn't give advice because <laughs> this be, is the thing. Maybe this was what Bobby was writing right before. On the way over here, bitch, I said, well, maybe let's just give advice. But on the way over here, we specifically had a conversation about a bitch that gave up too much advice. <laughs> that's unwarranted. <laughs> so I think, Bobby, I don't know what you're looking for, but I'm just going to just start laying shit on you. That <laughs> might be a lot. We're not going to do too much. We don't want to give you. I want to start seeming like we know it all. That's deep right there. But what we will tell you is you do got to finish your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you got a piece of a story to share. It, it, uh, what about, what about, what happened thank after? Thank God, thank God. Bobby, I'm going to say this. Thank God you were not Dr. King. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a... I have a dream. you like, okay, what is it? <laughs> Well, 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 I, well, well, I, I, well, I kind of have a dream. I'm thinking about <laughs> thinking about dreaming when I go to bed. You go, okay, well, well shit. Okay. Um, so I okay, have a okay, fleeting thought. <laughs> so maybe we should move to five. Well, let's, yeah, really let's, let's, do do. Next, let's do the next. Um, <laughs> but thank you, Bobby, <laughs> thank wherever you are. <laughs> thank you, Bobby. Um, Ashley wants to know, if you could have dinner with any historical figure, who would it be and why? Ooh. Okay, Ooh. it's giving gag. How deep in history? I'm I'm gonna say I this. Think I have one. I'm gonna say Marie Antoinette. No, that's literally <laughs> why I was sitting here. Marie saying, Antoinette she because she said let, let them eat cake, cake and I love what eating cake. Ass. <laughs> that's not what you said. I was I was gonna say I want to know what cake she was talking about. Booty. <laughs> I want to see the cake she when was talking Sikiana, about. Sikiana was talking about her. Now, if that's true, then my answer changes. It's Marie Antoinette. Okay. Now. Ah, I want to know what cake true. she was talking about. She that's wasn't talking about no goddamn pound, well, yeah. baby pound cake. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. What, was, what would be your original answer? 
<laughs> a, a, histor- a historical figure. It can be any time. It could be breaking bread with Jesus. Honey. See, now, nah, I got to be careful because if it's a non-melanated historical figure, I don't know how well the dinner would go. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. They, they would want me to serve it. Shit. So, Some of them, yeah. A good chunk of them. So, I ain't going to go too deep in history. I will say, I would say Audre Lorde. And why is that? She. Um, that because as far as feminist and even queer theory, she's the person who one of the first ones that I discovered that I really feel like helped shape my politic. So I would say her. Yes. Okay. But now, I feel, but yeah, I want to go deeper in history, but I'm drawing a blank. So yeah, we gonna go with Audrey Lou. That's oh, not yeah. that deep in. History. I would say George Washington, and I would check him. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean you gonna check him? That's a, What's that? I'm gonna be that's like you like, all punk we, ass. <laughs> if we going back cussing people out, then my dad Let's would do that. that. Yes, uh, well, yeah, we got to hear that one now. Who you cussing out? And it's like, can I bring a weapon? If we going <laughs> back in time to confront people. Who am I about to box? <laughs> only right you now. can only bring mace. mace. <laughs> just jump <laughs> out of mace. Imagine just jump out of mace with George Washington down. They <laughs> <laughs> have a fucking bow and arrow and I just got mace. Bitch, he's <laughs> like, ah, don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, uh, I get him go back and write the, the night right before he right before he ruins the presidency. Bitch, just lay him down, <laughs> lay him down. Bitch, run out the whole bottle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like picturing it, <laughs> honey. I said, yeah. What have you done for me lately, mother? All of that. <laughs> I think I'm trying to think of somebody else. I love this question too. This is a good you question. Have good questions tonight. <laughs> now, that was my favorite one. That one. Sorry, Bobby. That was my favorite question so far. Okay, period. Thank you, Bobby. We sorry. I still did. Bobby didn't even have a question, but that was a good. That was a good one. <laughs> Heidi, I think someone needs to intervene. You've got to gather, your, got to gather yourself, woman. <laughs> I'm so I'm gagged so sorry. that you're thinking of a street crawl so with George Washington. Girl, I'm so I'm, I'm, George can you hear me? Girl, spray him, his wig fall off, bitch. He skid up, slip in the mace, fall down. Girl, <gasps> girl, I put him in handcuffs just so you say you see what you, you see what you what you have done, what you, you just, have created. You just an ignorant bitch. Oh my god, girl, you fuck just, that. You just so ignorant. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming for anybody just, who got that any just, president. I think it's Reagan. Ooh, okay, oh, that's yeah. who I'm spinning the block for. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm spinning the block for Reagan. Going off on that ass. Yeah. Reagan, Reagan if was kind of. If I had to pick, Reagan was unfair. Reagan, Reagan was diabolical. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you think of it. You think of it. At yeah. this point, anything in society that you have a problem with, you can pinpoint it was probably his fault. Tapped it on literally. You, Shit, check, the eighties, his reign. His, his you, time. Are you? Okay? Are you? Okay? You good? <laughs> are I'm, you back with I'm us back. from the beyond? I'm back from the beyond. Okay, I met Bobby. <laughs> what, 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 was, what was Bobby giving? <laughs> Bitch, it was Bobby is Brown. It, is it? Oh, Bitch. What, wait, what? <laughs> Bitch, it was Bobby Brown. A- ain't he with us? Girl. Is, he, ain't he, is Bobby with us? Astral projection. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, he better get back in his body. I watched a movie <laughs> where you get out your body like that. What was it called? The, does, y'all seen that movie, you get out your body and they might, did something else get in your body? Then you left in the, in the further. What is that? See, yeah, y'all know, know what I'm talking that. about. The movie with the further. Uh-uh, what's that called? Tiptoe through the window. Oh, it's in the city. I, I don't watch scary shit. I don't. Okay. I'm sorry, I ain't seen it. No. I'm sh- I'm- You're not a spooky girl? I don't. I can't. I, I have to. If I watch something scary, I have to be in a very comfortable space. I have to be with someone. They have to be holding me. I have to be under the covers. I have to feel safe. I can't do I can't. <laughs> Just say you want to have sex. Because this sounds no. like <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> like this intimate setup. I'm like, girl. <laughs> It's giving fully the Netflix and chill. She said there needs to be some candles the burning, <laughs> some dinner of, before, a, a nice bath a right row. before. You, like, I said, girl, what is going on? <laughs> some soft music in the background. You say, girl, you invited me over for movies tonight. What is going on? Mm. Okay, well, look, let's let's thank you so much for being here. I have to thank say, you. it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you guys. For, thank you guys for having me. Of when course. I got the email, I was so excited. 
Yay. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I thought it was scam. I thought it was spam. Uh, I mean I because like, I had seen some other episodes and they were all with like the girls and the icons from RuPaul Drag Race. And I'm like, oh, I'm just some bitch from Decatur. So oh, it's no. we, love we just love talking to everybody. We, that's why I'm like, we love to diversify like the guests we bring on here. And like, um, I think like in every different community, there's always a need for like the voices to be heard. And so even if it's in the Absolutely. middle of chaos, we still want to hear that voice. It's always chaos here. It's yeah. always chaos here. Yeah, I was about to say that's all I know how to do. Chaos. <laughs> we, yes. love it. we love, love. So love. you're a survivor, aha. Uh-huh. Uh, in a Talisai survivor. Okay, yeah. Like I always say, I'm 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 not a strong black woman. I'm a black woman of moderate strength. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So don't test me. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Okay. okay. I'm doing life. the best I can. Honey, we're life. all we're all survivors. Uh, Literally. And where where can where can people find if they want to find you on social yes. media? Where can they find you at? How can they reach you? Yes, pretty much um, in TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. It's the Queer Agenda. Queer is spelled Q W E E R. Um, so yeah, that's the Queer Agenda on TikTok, the Queer Agenda on Instagram, the Queer Agenda on Twitter. Even though I'm scared of Twitter, I'm honestly about to oh. deactivate. And I'm coming to you. I'm, I'm coming to YouTube soon. Oh, yes. 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 You better. Is that is that just is that like fresh new information that we get to like announce? First? It is. Uh, it, it, it kind of, cause uh, I've been bluffing a little bit. Yeah. Like people have been asking me podcast, podcast, YouTube, YouTube. And I've, I, I'll say like once every six months, oh, like I'm working on it. And at that time I really do be working on it. Yeah. But then at yeah. some point I stopped working on it. It happens. This time I'm for real. Okay. We'll, get, well y'all know. heard it here first. This time it's for real. <laughs> this time it's for real. So yeah, you guys are the first ones I'm not lying to. Work. Okay. Thank you. Y'all heard that? And We're not eight. getting lied to. And in seven <laughs> months so, we'll know. That's something the uh, viewers didn't know about me. I'm a liar. Uh, uh, and, and, and <laughs> work. Hey, let they let they ask now. Hey, stand on your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that may be. At the moment. That's the theme of 2024. Honey, that's what Stand it's on your shit, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so, so much. much again for being here. We love you. Thank you. Yes, and hopefully we get to you talk guys. to you again. It was so much fun. Thank you. And when you get your podcast, yeah, bring don't us. Don't be lying. Bring me back once. I, once I, bring me back once my my my, my platform a little bigger. Uh, once I got a budget. Absolutely. And please have us on yours. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's play tag. You're it. It's, that's it. Let's, <laughs> let's play tag. Now, next time, it's our turn to be at your podcast. Okay. See, now Dude. I got to do it for real. So, yeah. Absolutely. I, I'll take you up on that. I, right. I love you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah so Bye. Much fun. Bye, darling. Bye, guys. Guys! <laughs> the woman! <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for listening to Hall & Closet today. I'm Jade Essence Hall. And I'm Heidi in Closet. And um, we want to say a big thank you, send out a lot of love to our very special guest today, Chris Atwell, a.k.a. The Queer Queer Agenda, Agenda. for joining us on the pod. Um, We learned a lot. Expressed a lot. Expressed a lot. A lot lot of laughter, love, and joy, for sure. Yes, for sure. And make sure you can know that, make sure that you can know. You know Make sure that you can know. (laughs) Make sure that you can know. Make sure no matter what you do, bitch, you better make sure that you can know. I'm make sure it. that you can know. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> you better make sure that you can know. Girl, you don't know. You Maybe. better make sure you can. And now you do. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you don't know, you better make sure you can. <laughs> Stop, <damn it>. <laughs> <laughs> you can okay. follow us on social media at Jada E. Hall and at Heidi in Closet. Also, make sure that you're following our pod at Hall and Closet Pod. Oh, I said it right. Yes, you did. And mom podcast at mom podcast. (laughs) And send us your most fascinating fun facts, your most burning questions, or any stories that you feel are sizzling, tantalizing, and sexy. Oh, no, that we're not doing that. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Where? Or or shocking stories, whatever. To hauntingcloset at Mm -hmm. gmail.com. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode. See you next week for more Hall and Closet. Closet. 
To listen to Holland Closet ad free and one week early, and to experience all of Mom Podcast premium content, check out Mom Plus Gold at mompodcast.plus. Holland Closet is produced by Moguls of Media, aka Mom. Production supervision, engineering, and editing by Margo Padilla with theme music by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem, Alaska, Big Dipper, Camille Stennis, and Joe Celio. Mm-hmm.